Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. Today's video, we're going to try and repair or retrieve information off our hard drive. Now, unfortunately, in this case, um, it's very dirty. It's been sitting around for a good 20 years. Hard drive could be intact, but it's been moved around a lot as well. So who knows how much uh, knocking around it's taken. Um, I don't think people realize sometimes just how vulnerable a hard drive can be. Uh, unfortunately, after everything we've done in this, well, you'll see. Okay, so in this video, we're going to clean, back up and restore a compact Bracerio. Now this thing was an Athlon XP processor, 1.8 gigahertz, 256 megabyte DDR original memory, 80 gigabyte hard drive, and 32 megabyte of DDR SD RAM. This actually at one point in time was kind of probably state of the art. But you want to see what's really Im uh, important about this? First you can see the dirt, then you move into the inside. This is what happens when you don't clean your computer and you give up on it. So, the main thing here, as you can see, it's got to be cleaned out. I'm not planning to restart it, but maybe for giggles, I'll um, give it a try with a different hard drive. But we'll see. But first, all that dirt there, that's got to be cleaned out. And then we'll progress from there. Okay, so here is the after picture. All cleaned out. I mean, it's not perfect. But like I say, I'm just cleaning it out enough. But as you can tell here, it's 10 times better than it was. But I'm recycling this, so it's not really going back to anybody. But when you work on things like these, you kind of want to get it as clean as you can because otherwise it's kind of nasty to work inside of. And I think I will try firing it up afterward once I've backed up all the information off the hard drive provided it's working, but we'll see. So when you're going to back up a hard drive that's close to 20 years old, in, in fact, this is, uh, it was state of the art at one time, 80 gigabyte. Imagine that. It's an IDE ribbon cable and a Molex connector used to power this. So you kind of have to have the tools to be able to back it up to get pictures and all that kind of stuff off it. So what do you need? I'm going to show you right here. So we're just going to set that down carefully. This device right here uses USB 2.0. This part simply plugs into um, a USB port of a computer. And this one here plugs into the back end to get it its power. And you just plug it in here. Once you plug that in, then you're going to plug it into an outlet and that's going to allow you to power the hard drive inside. But before you do that, first, you have to remove this part here. So this will just snap right off and inside is a ribbon cable. So I'm going to only have to take the other side off too. Let me just see if I have to do that or not. Yep. So we have to take the other end. So we'll take all the cables off and we're going to disconnect this. Now there's two little buttons here on each side. You just have to depress those and then this will come right out. Okay, so just depress it. You might need a screwdriver or something to get it out and then it's going to pull out. So when you take it out, all well, this is an empty shell after that. The main part is this part here. Now you can buy this in different variations, different kits. This represents the ribbon cable which goes onto the back of the hard drive and that's the Molex connector. So once it gets its power, your hard drive is going to work once you plug it into either a desktop or a laptop. Then you're going to be able to see your information and you're going to be able to back it up. So my suggestion to you, take your hard drive, use this to connect it first. So you have to look at it and there's a little divot right here. Hopefully you can see that. And there's a little divot on your ribbon cable. So it will only go in one way. So once you plug it in, and you want to make sure you plug it in this way, okay? 
and it's going to go inside so that when you plug in your Molex connector, it only can go so it's side by side. So that's how you can tell. Push that in. Okay, push your Molex connector in here. This one, just make sure it's pushed in. And now you're going to slide this whole thing into your compartment. All right, so you're just going to pop it in. It's going to slide out the other end. Okay, don't worry about that too much. The main thing is just get this end in first. And you're going to have to push on this end a little bit. And be careful. You don't want to have a fallout on you and ruin the hard drive that you're trying to back up. Okay, so once you got it, just pop it in. Make sure it's popped in the other side. You better, you'll be able to tell because you'll see that that's in place now. So now you're just going to push that inside. It should go, no problem. Then you're going to take your other end, just this piece here. And it's going to go over top. Okay, so you're going to have to space this a little bit, but it's not that difficult. And you're just going to pop it in there. And get it on both ends. You're going to push in on that side a little bit. And it'll go down. So then it'll pop in. So now it's secured in here. So now you're going to plug in your two connectors for your USB and your power. And then there's an on-off switch. Once you turn it on, and it's, well, first off, make sure it's connected to your computer first. But plug it into the power source first. Plug it into your computer second. And then turn on the switch. Once all that's done, if the hard drive is going to work at all, it will show up on your computer. And then you can proceed to back it up. Okay, so the moment of truth is here. I plugged it in. And I'm waiting to see if it shows up on the drive. So this is turned on now. And if you look at it, see if I can show that to you. It has the green light. Okay, that's, so that indicates this is this unit is powered up. But can it detect the hard drive or not? Oh, that's the big thing. So we're going to wait and see if it shows up on the screen here. And I'm really hoping it does. Because otherwise, all the information that was there is going to be gone. And that's going to be not a good day. So, at this point in time, it does not look like it's going to be detected. I'm going to switch it to a different USB just to see if that makes any difference at all. I'll switch it to a USB 3.0. And I am hearing sounds of life coming from this. So, understandably, it's going to be pretty slow considering the age of the drive and everything like that. But, if I can get the information, I have a storage, I have a USB stick on there that uh, likely is going to be big enough to copy everything over to. Oh, I can hear it starting up. Could take quite a while, maybe. What happens sometimes is when a hard drive sits in front of a, sorry, sits inside of a computer for that of an extended period of time, is the moisture and stuff in the air can get into it and cause it to corrode or to rust out. Now, it depends on how bad it is, but over a period of 20 years, it can be pretty bad. So... I'm kind of skeptical of whether I'm going to be able to do this or not. I'm hoping I can, but not really thinking it's going to work. So that'll be disappointing if that happens. But uh, actually, did I just see something new here? Let's check this out. So I don't remember that. G drive being there. So I'm going to click on that and see if it's getting any information. Because if it does, that would be awesome. That would be really awesome, actually. Because all they want is just the pictures. If I can, re if I can capture just those pictures in time and uh, before it's beyond repair or beyond paying like $3,000 for one of these data recovery places, which I know she probably won't do, um, then this information will be gone for life. But if I can get it back, 
that actually shows up and I can copy that to the USB that's that's a good day so let's really hope that that'll happen when the um, when they sit there for a long time like I say the platter or anything could get corroded and then trying to read the sectors after that um, could be it could be impossible but we're gonna give it a try and see when this finishes and let's hope the information pops up on the screen one thing you have to you have to be very patient with uh, this process because it can take a bit of time because these hard drives were phenomenally slow years ago so they didn't uh, it always worked that great so it's possible after waiting a little bit that I'll get something off of this or this could just be another lesson of if your pictures and your videos are important to you don't let them sit in a computer for years and years and years and don't try and retrieve them because once they're gone unfortunately they're gone and uh, unless you're willing to pay like 3k which is whopper it's pretty much about the standard price for retrieving a hard drive like that they have to be, rebuild it and put it all back together and hope they can get that information from it um, most people are not gonna not gonna have the money to do that just they're just not now there are people that'll pay it and that's great but in most cases the pictures are just simply gone okay so an error message came up so the locations not available uh, it's not accessible and a parameter is incorrect. What exactly that means, I don't know. I'm going to look it up, try and find out. Uh, I have seen this before, and at the time it didn't really mean anything because it was an old drive that I didn't care about. But because this is somebody else's, if solving this issue will allow me to get those pictures back, oh, I'm going to delve into it a little bit and see if it's possible. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is um, trying to see if I can repair that drive in order to get the information off it. So I've gone into the command prompt, if right, running it as the administrator. I've gone in and done check disk space slash R for repair space G in this case, which is the name of the drive showing up. Now be patient because it's going to take a quite a while um, to go through and check everything on here. And we'll go from there. So right now, it's showing the type of file system, NTFS. It's examining the basic file system structure. It's going to go through that. Um, yeah, and like I say, there's going to be, it's going to take a while. There are five stages. And if it goes through the whole thing and is successful, chances are you're not going to be able to see your disk. You're going to be able to see your contents. It'll give you the opportunity to take those contents, back them up, reformat drive, and in this case I'm just going to get rid of it, but if it was a newer drive, it would probably have fixed it and you could continue to use it. Although I would still uh, back up the data just to be on the safe side in case there's something else going on. So right now it's showing me that the file record segment 4 and 5 are unreadable and it's progressing from there so it's not looking good at this point but uh, we'll see so as you can see at this point it's at progress 16 of 83,392 so this could take several hours potentially so like I say be patient let it continue and at the end of the day let's hope we can get the information back Okay, so unfortunately, uh, sometimes the hard drives just can't be retrieved. Um, if I had a white room and I could take it apart and try breaking, replacing parts and stuff like that, um, but that's a big operation that's going to require a whole lot more money than um, this person is going to want to pay, I'm sure. But I will give everything back to them as is. Um, no worse for wear. And if they want to go that route, they're certainly able to. But not everything works out the way we want it to. Uh, not, everything, not everything has a happy ending. 
All right, everybody. Well, unfortunately, things didn't work out the way I was hoping they might. Um, there's no retrieving the data off this hard drive. It tries to uh, it tried to repair it uh, using check desk, uh, which is the only option I really had left um, since the hard drive was having difficulty being read. Got the error message, looked it up, and basically told me, uh, looked up, uh, actually looked up a video myself of how to repair it because I've never done it before. It takes five stages. It took probably about 16 hours of trying to recover the data. But, as you've seen in the video, it didn't work. So, unfortunately, that's, that's a sad end to what could have been a good story. Um, and now I have to pass that on to the client and let them know that unless they're willing to pay a huge amount of money, or upwards of around $3,000, um, to take it to a professional white lab, have them literally take it apart, uh, platter by platter, and try and retrieve the information, um, this data is just simply not going to be retrievable. So, hope you like that information. Hope you gave you a bit of insight onto some of this stuff. If you like it, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Think about subscribing and stay, hit that bell for future notifications. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.